girls. We're going to continue working with chapter 24. Uh, today is day three, and we're going to be working with the sacrament of matrimony, a man and a woman, woman promise to always love and be true to one another. I'm going to start reading on page 276 on the We Believe section. A man and a woman who want to be married in the church spend time preparing to celebrate the sacrament. The parish priest or deacon usually explains to the couple the church's teachings about marriage and makes sure that the couple are free to marry one another. Often, married members of the parish community assist in preparing couples for matrimony. In this paragraph they're talking about before marriage, the church wants to make sure that the man and woman, woman are right for each other. They have classes that teach them about marriage and living with one another and all the things that are involved with becoming a married couple. In the next paragraph, during the preparation, the couples learn about the holiness and duties of Christian marriage. They grow to appreciate Jesus' place in their married life. They prepare their marriage ceremony with great detail. They also may participate in a program or retreat with other couples who are also preparing for marriage. And Catholics can celebrate the sacrament of penance in preparation for the sacrament of matrimony. Third paragraph, in all other sacraments, Jesus acts through his ordained ministers to offer the grace of the sacrament. But in the sacrament of matrimony, a bride and groom are the celebrants. And we're going to highlight that. That's a very important feature uh, to this. Um, in the sacrament of matrimony, the bride and the groom are celebrants. So that is a major difference between this sacrament and all the others. The bride and the groom are the celebrants. Well, what does a priest or deacon do? If we keep reading, a priest or deacon does not marry the couple. The bride and groom marry each other. The priest is there as a witness, and the couple marry each other. Let's continue reading. Jesus acts through the couple and through their promise to always love and be true to each other. We're going to highlight that. Pick a separate color. The priest or deacon is the official witness of the sacrament. Let's highlight that. And he blesses the union that God has joined together. So in the sacrament of matrimony, the man and the woman are celebrants. The bishop or and priest are the witnesses. They are there to serve as witnesses. Let's continue. The right, and remember that word right stands for part of a religious ceremony. The right of marriage. The celebration of the sacrament of matrimony often takes place within the Mass. Remember, we talked about most sacraments, with the exception of the anointing of the sick, take place within a Mass, so that the rest of the parish, the rest of the church can witness it. When it does, the Liturgy of the Word includes readings selected by the couple themselves. The rite of marriage takes place after the Gospel is proclaimed. The marriage usually begins with a deacon or priest taking the couple, asking the couple three important questions. Are they free to give themselves in marriage? That means are they married to someone else or are they allowed to be married? Will they love and honor each other as husband and wife for the rest of their lives? And will they lovingly accept children from God and raise them in the faith? So those are three questions that the priest or deacon asks the couple during this rite of matrimony. Let's keep reading. When answering these questions, the bride and groom then pledge their love for each other by exchanging 
something goes. And there's that word vow again that we've already learned about. We're going to take a look at something in just a little bit. Vows are promises. Remember that the uh, religious life take three vows of uh, chastity, obedience, and poverty. As a married person, you take a vow. You vow to love your wife or your husband before one else. Let's keep reading. They may say words such as, I take you to be my husband or wife. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. Next paragraph. The deacon or priest receives the couple's promises and asks God to strengthen their love and faithfulness and to fill them with many blessings. The rings are then blessed and the couple exchanges them as a sign of their love and fidelity. Well, what is fidelity? Fidelity is the faithfulness to a person and to duties, obligations, or promises. In marriage, fidelity is the loyalty and the willingness to be true to each other always. Let's highlight that as well. Uh, it's that promise. It's that promise that you are going to love that person no matter what. Uh, next paragraph. The whole assembly prays the prayer, prayer of the faithful, and the Mass continues with the liturgy of the Eucharist. After the Lord's Prayer, the priest faces the couple and prays a special prayer asking for God's favor on his new marriage. This new marriage. This is called the nuptial blessing. Nuptial is just another name for the word for the uh, marriage or wedding ceremony. Here is part of the nuptial blessing. Keep them faithful in marriage and let them be living examples of Christian life. Give them the strength that comes from the God so that they may be witnesses of Christ to others. The bride and groom, if they are Catholic, receive Holy Communion. Their communion is a sign of their union with Jesus, who is the source of their love. So I thought what might be a good idea is to actually give you an example of what a wedding looks like. And these are some pictures of me and Mrs. D's wedding. Uh, what you see is on the left uh, over here. Uh, whoops. That is uh, my mother. And she is lighting what we call a unity candle. You can see there's two smaller candles. Uh, she has lit the one on the right. And on the opposite side, we can see Mrs. D's mother. She's lit the candle on the left. If you remember yesterday, we talked about uh, in the Bible, it says that a man shall leave his um, mother and a woman leave her home and the two shall become one. So this is a symbol of the fire that we receive at home, the love, the nurturing, the care, the growing up. And your mother uh, lights these candles. And then Mrs. D and I later on in the mass are going to take those candles and light one candle together. You'll see that when it comes up. Uh, then the procession comes down, and in this picture you can see there are some altar servers. Uh, there's me, and there's my best man, that's my uh, sister's husband. And behind them are two priests. The one on the right was our parish priest, and the one on the left is my cousin. My cousin is actually a priest. And you should notice that this chapel, this place, looks very, very, very familiar there you can see me and the priest waiting. We made down the front for the women, for the bride to come down the aisle. And there's Mrs. D. She's in her wedding gown walking down the aisle. Uh, giving her away is what we call it. Walking her down the aisle is her godfather. Normally it would be her father. Her father passed away from cancer a few years back. So her godfather is walking her down the aisle, connecting her baptism to this sacrament of matrimony. Uh, the mass begins and we have some people doing some readings. On the left is Sarah's aunt and she's doing the first reading. In the center on the bottom is one of Mrs. D's other aunts. She's doing the second reading. And on the right, these are my sister's daughters. They are doing the prayers of the faithful. 
So remember, we just read in the uh, religion book that the sacrament of matrimony occurs within a mass. The beginning of the mass is the liturgy of the word, so that's why there's readings. The second part of the mass is uh, the liturgy of the Eucharist. Here we have uh, Mrs. D and I standing up before the priest. This is in the PMA chapel, and he is uh, marrying us at this point. Uh, Mrs. D is putting a ring on my finger, and I've put one on hers. Uh, we do this as we take our vows. As we promise our lives to each other, we put rings on each other's fingers, and those rings are a sign of the vows that we made towards each other. Uh, this is the uh, nuptial blessing. Um, and then we have communion. Uh, on the left is my aunt. This is my brother, my father's sister. And on the right is Mrs. D's aunt. This is her mother's sister. And they're bringing up the gifts for communion. Uh, towards the end of the mass, Mrs. D and I light the unity candle. Uh, you can see that those candles are quite small. And we are lighting that one candle together. The two shall become one. So those two flames from two separate households, two separate upbringings uh, become one. And that's a picture of the candles. Um, those were brand new candles at the beginning of Mass. It was about 98 degrees that day, and there's no air conditioning, as you know, in the PMA Chapel. Those candles were very, 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 very low. Uh, afterwards, we are now married, and they, everyone was clapping. Uh, this is one of my favorite pictures ever. This is uh, the picture of our new family together where um, my uh, family that I grew up with and Mrs. D's family that she grew up with, we are now one big family joined by the sacrament of matrimony. So that's all of our family members. Uh, these are some religious people that came to our uh, wedding. Uh, in the top left, we have Sister Claudette, uh, Sister Henry. There's me and Mrs. D, that's Sister Janet and our priest, Father Aggie. And on the bottom right, we have my cousin, uh, Father Rick, and again, Father Aggie. He was our parish priest. And then, of course, we have a little party. So I wanted to include pictures of the little celebration. Every sacrament is a cause for celebration and weddings, and the sacrament of matrimony is no different than that. Uh, I thought you might enjoy that. Um, this is day three. Uh, tomorrow is going to be day four, and you will have your quiz tomorrow, and then your test will be on Tuesday. There's no school on Monday of next week, so your Chapter 24 test will be on a Tuesday of next week. Uh, have a good one, and I'll talk to you later.